Hey everybody, Matt here from Everyday Astro and today I want to take a quick look at how you can use Starnet++ to make your nebula images really pop. Starnet++ is an incredibly powerful program. Its basic premise is it removes the stars from your images but that allows you to selectively edit the nebula without bloating your stars or creating stars that detract from your nebula. The thing I like most about it is if you process it in the right way you're able to add the stars back in at the end with smaller, more pinpoint stars that don't detract from your nebula and ensure that your images really pop. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So this is my raw image, completely unedited as it stands. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just run through a few curves adjustments just so I can get to the point uh, where I can actually run it through Starnet. So first off, I just run a curves adjustment. Uh, I do use arc sign curves. Uh, I have covered that in a previous video uh, and I have a link to how you can download those in that. So I will try and um, um, link that above. Uh, then all I'm also going to do is just a rough colour balance um, so that I can get everything roughly into place. Again, for the, for the sake of this, I am not interested in getting it perfect. I'm just trying to get it to about the point, which for me is about here, so that you can actually run the image through Starnet. You see, I, I have stretched it a little way. Uh, you can see, obviously, the stars are clearly coming out. The nebula is quite clear in the centre of this. Um, so at this point, I will go ahead and I save the image into my Starnet folder. And that wants to come up. And it gets saved as RGB test5.tiff. It's the file that the program looks for as uh, it, it processes it. So with that saved, uh, I need two items on a Mac. So I have my Starnet folder. So this is all my files that are in the Starnet folder. Uh, and I have um, my command prompt. So to run it, I simply take the run RGB Starnet, put this into there, and I hit go. Now, the one thing I will say is this takes a long time. It is not a quick process. Uh, it's a very powerful program. So anything that's powerful and good doesn't happen quickly. As Guinness would say, the good things come to those who wait. So you can see down here, for example, just how slow this process is going to be. I am not going to bore the hell out of you. So what I'll do is I will come back in a few minutes time when this has run its course and we will continue from there. So it's been about seven minutes and Starnet has now completed its run. And as you can see here, we now have a new file called RGB test5 underscore s. And the underscore s is for starless. It's, it's nice and easy like that. And so when we open up the file, this is what you get. Now, as you can see, this is a, a pretty good outcome. Um, th this, is, this is an excellent image. Uh, if you have a look at you know, it, it really has removed all of the stars very, very well. Now, you do get a few artifacts. Let's see if I can just find a good one. Like here, where stars have been removed, you can spend an awful long time with your clone stamp tool kind of going along and tidying these up if you want to. Uh, I have a habit, unless they're really obvious, of not doing that because. Ultimately, I find when you put the stars back in later in the image, you, you don't notice that anyway. So, of course, if you are just looking to make a starless image uh, and keep it that way, I would recommend spending the time going through and taking that out. I think it would improve your overall picture. But what we need to do now is to have a look at how we can make the, the stars image. So that's the first step of what we're actually trying to do here because we've now got these two images. So the starless one and the original one you start with. And one of the things that's missing is the one that has just stars. So if we're gonna put those back at the end, we need just the stars. So from your original image, um, what you need to do is go to image and then apply image. And you'll be given plenty of options here, um, but you, you do need to make sure you have selected your starless image. So your, your, your source is, RGB test5 underscore S. 
um, you are going to subtract is what you're going to do. The idea is you're taking what's in this image and you are subtracting it from this image. So you'll only be left with uh, any difference between the two images. And the offset uh, you can set, that is quite literally how dark it's going to make the background. So for example, if I set that to 30, you can see it kind of brightens there. Uh, if I went all the way down to one, it would go very dark. I always think one is a little bit extreme. Um, so I normally plumb for around five. Uh, I find that is a pretty good way. So now what I've got is just a stars image. So I now have stars and I have starless. Uh, identical images in terms of size uh, and positioning. It is literally just the case that one has stars and no nebula, the other one has nebula and no stars. So from here, so this isn't a lesson in, in how to uh, edit your images. So I am literally just gonna do a couple of bits to go, look, here you go, this is what I would have done. Uh, let's do a bit of uh, vibrance and such. I'm a bit being chewed by, 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 um, by, by George here. So let's see if we can get him to stop doing that too. Let's just pretend this is, is as much as we want to do. We're gonna try and make the image look like, there we go. We're, we're now happy with that as a final image. So what we want to try and do now is put the stars back in to the image. So the way we would do that is come back to our star image, uh, unlock the layer so that we can kind of copy that and then come back here and paste that into our image. Now, so we've got two layers now, we've got the background layer there and we've got the stars over the top. And with the uh, star layer uh, selected, uh, and you can see rename that to stars if you want, I. I'm terrible at renaming layers. I'm just too, too lazy to do it, to do it properly. George, please, please stop. Um, but then from here, you do have the option to select the type of layer that this is going to be. And as, as you hover over them, you'll see it does change and it, it tells you what, or shows you what each one would do if you selected it. Uh, I do find the two best ones are either screen uh, or the one I normally use is linear dodge brackets add. Uh, that's the one I, I find is my preference. So I can put that back into it. And then lastly, I get to play with the opacity of those stars because I can turn them to zero and turn them completely off. Oh, this is hilarious. Um, uh, but I, I normally plumb for anywhere between 66%, just because I, I like the number 66, um, or up to about 85%. I normally find that is somewhere in the region of, of what I need it to be. Uh, and once you, you're happy with that, you, you can either flatten that image or, or keep it in its layers, um, but that will give you, you your final image. You, you've, you've managed to edit the nebula separately, so you've kept the stars small and tight, uh, and you're able to actually then, uh, you know, just have a, a clearer image in your final image. And just to show you the kind of difference that makes, this is uh, one of my final images. So what I've done is I've, I've taken the stars from one that was stretched with the stars in place, and I've taken one that had the, the star net removal of it, and then I've just put the, the, the stars over the top so you can see the difference. So where it was stretched, you can see the, the nebula is quite clear there, but, but these the bright stars and large stars really detract from the image. They, they, they just don't look great. It just looks like someone sort of just splashed a bucket of paint or something all over, all over the image. And it really detracts, in my view, from that nebula. Whereas if I take that layer off, this is it when I've done the star net and put the, the stars back in again. And in my view, and again, this is obviously only a personal view, this is 100% opacity too, so I, I could bring them down a little bit if I wanted to. This, this really makes the nebula stand out. The nebula really pops in the images. It's what your eyes see, but the stars are still there, so it looks natural. It's one of the reasons I'm not a fan of starless images is to me, they look unnatural. Um, whereas this doesn't, this, this still looks like a, a night sky with stars in it, but the nebula is, is front and central. And you know, the Rosette Nebula is a beautiful nebula. Why would you want to detract away from that? So to me, this is a much, much easier way to, to edit. Uh, you don't bloat your stars, you keep your natural looking images, uh, and you end up with a, with a final image that looks something like that. So hopefully you found that useful and uh, you can start to use Starnet in your workflow. If you do have any questions or comments or suggestions, then please do leave them in the comments below and I'll come back to you as, as quickly as I can. Other than that, uh, I wish you, you safe and well and uh, clear skies.